you know, you're comparing it to me. I'm a lousy bowler. I only have 140 average. <laughs>was set and we were you know shooting so it things happen but um we're coming out and telling you that you know we screwed up and we caught our mistake and now we're showing you you know it ended up inflating the numbers so it's going to the numbers aren't going to be as high um it it skewed them in the lower left range Uh, apparently whenever i did this i bumped my scale uh and it happened right away because the 100 to 600 thousands of inch yep. uh, lift, uh, the numbers were skewed a little bit, and it was roughly 20 to 25 CFM. wasn't a lot, but it is a lot. It is a difference. Yep. And uh, and actually, it was skewed in my favor. So right. you know, and I uh, so we want to show you that uh, we're being upfront and honest. It it, it happens. Yep. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm I'm a real stickler with shots. My dad's always like, "Oh my God, just let's just shoot." I'm like, "No, I gotta get that perfect <laughs> angle." So I ain't got time for this. Uh, we we uh, <laughs> we we moved it right off the right from the beginning uh, because I was trying to get different shots to because I want to try to show you guys as much as I can. And, uh, you know, that, that way you guys can see what's going on. And it, it takes it, a lot to yeah, do this. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I got a lot going on. I got, uh, you know, right now, uh, you're going to hear in the background, we got, I got guys over here working right now on an engine. We're trying to get ready for drag week. This is Saturday afternoon, and it's what? I don't know, 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon Mm -hmm. we're shooting this video, and we're still working on Saturday afternoon trying to get this stuff done. There's not enough hours in the day for me. We're a busy shop. We got something going on a lot, a lot, a lot. We Mm -hmm. are so busy. And uh, so anyways, because of that, I'm trying to rush my son, which, you know, I feel bad because he's trying to get this, do a good job so that you guys can enjoy these videos. 
And uh, so I probably, I don't know, I bumped the thing or sure didn't did. zero it out. Right. I don't know what happened. But anyways, it happened. And, yep. I, and we caught it, and we're sharing that with you. I'm not going to, yep. you know what, There's we're not going to bullshit you guys. It is what it is. Right. So... And, and the numbers are still incredible. They're, oh, it's still good. Yeah, yeah. we're. Yeah. I mean, the the higher the lift is, the port It's all in the port. So you know, it those numbers didn't change too much. Um, but actually, they got better a little bit. Well, uh, I did change some angles. Yes, so we, I did change yep. some angles. Yep. So I, I we tried were to improve what? the port a little bit. So. We were what on the angles? Uh, I don't share the other than the seat angle. So. Oh. But I did change the uh, one lower angle by five degrees, and uh, and it helped. The port picked up about uh, roughly about seven CFM, so it liked it. Um, and I put a different top cut on it, and I changed that angle by roughly seven degrees. And uh, and that's what the flow bench is good for. You know, that's mm -hmm. what we use the flow bench for is valve seats. The port itself. You know, it flows what it flows. I know my cross-sectional area is going to provide enough area for me to turn X amount of RPM with this many cubic inches. Mm -hmm. And that's all I care about. I don't really care what the flow is. If you got a good line of sight, you're you're gonna you're gonna make power. Yeah. So, you know, uh, last week's numbers compared to this week's numbers, uh, you know, at 100 inches of lift, so 0.100. Uh, last week's numbers, we were at 99.7. And now this week, you know, with once we caught our mistake, we're at 75, and that is CFM. Uh, so as you can tell, it, it went down, you know. Um, but here's the cool part, though. So my dad caught it, and he realized, wait a second, these numbers are really good. <laughs> um, so... He went back and we did I'm good, all this. I'm good, but I ain't that good. <laughs> <laughs> and when he measured all, the, or uh, redid all the flow numbers, you know, what we we what we realized right off rip was these numbers are consistently off. They're not off like you know you got 300 cfm and 180. They are all off like consistently like 20 cfm, 25 and you understand cfm. Understand too, because of my experience, you know what I realize how much. This head only has a 2200 valve in it, and the short turn on it's only this long. It's not a long short turn like my Ram Air 5. It's not a big 2300 valve. So when I'm looking at those numbers, you know, at uh, uh, three, four, five hundred inches of lift, I'm thinking, man, this is just incredible, or I'm screwed up. And <laughs> I was screwed up. And, and, you know, and so I'm not going, we're not going to beat the dead horse, but, uh, you know, at 400 inches of lift, you know, I, I'm looking at last week's numbers. We were at 282, and you know we were happy, tickle pink with that. Heck yeah, that's a big number. <laughs> yeah, uh, but for that particular head. right, yes. And but uh, now you know with the new numbers and we fixed our mistake. You know we're at 400 inches of lift, 267 cfm, still not bad. No. And you know, but as you, you know, it's only we're talking 20. No, 15, yeah, It's right 10, around 20 CFM. Yeah, 20 f CFM. So, uh, so I mean, it, it's very but consistent. But 20 CFM is 20 CFM. Oh, absolutely, yes. No, and, that, and that's huge, too. If, but I owe, if I owe you 280 bucks, I'll give you 260. You're going to say, hell no. Right. <laughs> so. But, you know, I was just impressed with, okay, how consistent and how even, you know, all these number difference, differences were. And so 500 inches of lift, we're still getting 308 CFM. Even um, that is like... The correct, after we fixed it. Yeah, that's three, the fixed one. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean... I, at a half inch lift, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and that's with a cylinder head that is cast iron, uh, factory head uh, with port job done to it, obviously. But, I mean, that's incredible. So uh, the big... Big thing that you won't notice the difference on is that 700 inches of lift. We really highlighted that because that's where our cam's going to be at. And uh, you won't see much of a difference CFM-wise. Uh, so the old numbers were 338. The new numbers are 336. So They're pretty close. That's, that's how great that port work is. And I, I only think that's the same port. What do you mean? So when we did last year, or last year, last week, 
uh, that was a different port that you uh, we no, measured. No, it's the same port. Oh, it is the same yeah, port. Yeah, same port. Because okay, that's so. the only one I got the push rod done on. So okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, so put it, putty it up. So. So yeah, I mean that right there is consistent, which is good. That's why we know it was the tool. Uh, but here's what's really impressive. So you always want to flow past what you're going to your goal. What your lift. what your lift is on your cam. So say you have a 700 inches of lift then you, you want the head to keep flowing past that. A lot of guys say, oh, it doesn't matter after that. Yes, it does, because if you don't, if the head starts to stall, it'll back up. And when it back up, backs up, it kills the engine. So you got to, I shouldn't say kills it, but it takes horsepower away. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that the head continues to flow through the lift range. So we'll, we'll flow them sometimes to an inch. This head, we don't need to, but, but we did flow it to 800. Yep. And, you know, the numbers actually shocked me because the this is where it goes back to my dad's point the seat when he redid the seat i think helped because last week's numbers we were at 340 at 800 inches uh lift and we well we were close to 341 but we just said it was 340 because it was like 340.2 or, or six yeah. or something i don't remember what um I mean. so we just called it 340 but now after we fixed our mistake and did the uh, new angles on the valve seats, we're at 347. So it's almost 350 CFM yeah. at 800 inches of lift. So that's that right there tells me that the changes to the exhaust uh, or um, intake valve seat and the change of the actual, um, now we're at, at 800 inches of lift you know, we're flowing better than what we were previously. Absolutely, so the valve angles helped. Now something that I want to explain to you guys too is, is we always say 800 inches, 700 inches. Obviously it is not 800 inches. I mean, I don't have a tape measure that long. So what that means is 0.800 inches of lift. But in the world of cylinder head technology or talk or whatever you want to call it, we all talking 800 inches, 700 inches, and everybody knows what that means. Mm -hmm. But if you're not familiar with that, then you're thinking 800 inches, that's, what the heck? What are they doing, measuring around the building? I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> but yeah, so that, uh, it's actually 0 .800 inches of lift. Yep. And, uh, and so, you know, another thing too that uh, comes up is uh, the factory camshaft, my son's talked about this before, the factory camshafts back in the day Pontiac's cams are only like between uh, 370, 0 0.370 inches and to 0 0.407 inches of lift. The Ram Air 4 cam, everybody thought, oh my gosh, it's 470 thousandths with a 1.5 rocker and a 5.30 with a 1.65 rocker. And, and you know, everybody lost their cookies over 500 inches of lift. And that, that today, in today's world of cars, uh, the Z, you know the new Corvettes and the Camaros and Hemi's and all that, they've got close to 700 inches of lift from the mm -hmm. factory now. And um, so, you know, it, uh, we were playing with baby cams back then. Yeah. Now, you know, the technology improved, the cylinders or the uh, valve springs have improved, uh, the cam profiles have improved, the lifters have improved. There's a lot of improvements o over the years. And so now 700, 800 inches of lift is nothing anymore uh, for a street car. And uh, Brandon, the guy who works for me, his engine has almost 900 inches. It's 0 .80, 8 point, I'm sorry, 0 0.880. So <laughs> almost 900 inches of lift in his street car. He drives that on the street and beats it to death. My wife's car, I got a Ram Air 5 in her car. Um, and uh, that thing's got uh, seven, almost 700 inches of lift. It's like 680 or 690, and uh, we got street, uh, plenty of customer cars that are you know, around 700 to 800 inches of lift, and they're driving them on the street. Now, yeah, it does make valve spring, springs wear out a little bit quicker, but you can get away with it. It's not like the old days. Yeah, yeah and so with the roller cam, that the the ramp on that uh profile is not as strong or not as quick so it, it helps them keep that valve spring well, from living a little longer yeah so you know what uh, obviously the quicker you can get the valve to full lift uh, the better for performance 
So, but he's talking about the ramp on the camera. We're going to talk about all this mm -hmm. stuff. So you guys need to make sure and subscribe to our channel. Yep. And hit the uh, uh, notification icon because uh, all our videos when we release them, that way you get notified of what's coming out. Yep. But uh, and we're going to touch base with all this. I can't fit it all in one video. Nope. So, uh, but what he's talking about is is the ramp speed on the camshaft and a hydraulic profile and a solid lifter profile on a roller cam is huge. I mean, it's a difference of night and day. And I'll show you guys that. I'm going to show you uh, the physical difference in a video. But um, but yeah. So you know, with the new technology of cam profiles, we can get away with big lift. You know, it's not like it used to be. And uh, and it's not unusual to see you know seven hundred inches of lift now on the street. Yeah. Yep. So and you know we did averages on these numbers and the average on uh, the now and this now this is, is after one, we fixed it. Yep. And it's from one hundred to eight hundred <coughs> inches of lift. Yeah. So it's the whole lift range. range. Uh, so we averaged you know two hundred fifty point eight. Point, uh, 250.9, uh, rounding up a little bit, it's actually 250.87, but I'm going to call it 250.9 CFM on the this is the average. wide port. And so how you get the average is you take all the numbers in the lift range, you add them together, then you divide it by the lift range. So you're 800, so it's eight spots. So you divide that number by eight, and it gives you the average port flow. Now, th I, th that brings up a good question of average. So like you know, is that when the valve is, say that we're opening at 700, uh, so the average, would that be like when that valve opens up, as soon as it opens up to the point where it closes, is we're, we're going to guarantee 250 CFM? Well, it's not guaranteed. I mean, no, that isn't what, what that means. What that means is, is that you have to have some kind of comparative. So <clears throat> whenever you take and you add all those numbers together, and then you tell you know show them the number of what we had before we did the uh, uh, well on the wide non wide port. Yeah, so the non wide port was two hundred twenty nine point two five. Okay. So you got yourself a, a twenty one point six two uh, difference in averages. Yeah, tw that's huge. A twenty one mm -hmm. CFM difference in <clears throat> average, not overall, not the gross lift. That's overall. And uh, that's, a, that's a big number. Yeah. Uh, there's formulas out there. Some guys say that you can make two horsepower per CFM. Some guys say 2.2. I don't go by that because, you know what, every combination is different, and there's a lot of factors that contribute to that. So you mm -hmm. can't really go by, you know, oh, this is going to make this much horsepower if we multiply it 2.2. It doesn't work that way. Right. It'll give you an idea, you know, what you're shooting for, but it isn't going to be exact. So that, uh, but, but an average, an increase in average of 20 CFM over the full range, that's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was just, I, I mean, I get to understand the averages better because it's not like your typical average where people think of average like, oh, I've, I've uh, it's like a bowling average. Okay. Really. Okay. So you know, if you have an average of, uh, an average bowler's uh, 200 uh, bowler, then, you know, you're comparing it to me. I'm a lousy bowler. I only have 140 average. <laughs> so. it, basically what it shows is that what we did, it made it better. Yes. And it made it better by 21.62 CFM, which, is, again, is huge. That's a big difference. Yeah. Yep. So um, with, with all that, the, the paper that we're looking at right now is actual what my dad sends to his customers for the... It's a uh, flow, flow bench. That I give everybody. And on this, we'll have a lot of information on here that uh, is very important because if you don't know what test pressure they're testing it at, you could have false numbers. And, uh, and we're going to sh show you that on the flow bench. Yep. And the temperature, the humidity, all that stuff affects the air in that we're flowing and everything like that. So, yep. Cool air moves easier than hot air. Yep. Um, and, you know, there's testing is done with 3 8 radius clay around the flange and uh, two inch header pipe. So that's for the exhaust side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's just, you know, stuff that my dad would put on there. So that way you have this piece of paper that goes with your cylinder heads and you know exactly what it's flowing at temperature, humidity, at the inches of water. 
Yep, the test pressure of inches of water. So that's what that the the, the industry standard is 28 yep. inches. Used to be 25, but uh, everybody didn't like them flow numbers, so they bumped it up a little bit and made them made the flow numbers better. So they run at 28 inches. You know, an, an engine could see. You know what? An engine does not operate at a static 28 inches of test pressure. So that's why a flow bench really does not tell you the whole story. It's good for certain things. It's good for finding out some things inside the head. Um, one of the things that a, a flow bench does for me is I can listen to the port when it's on the flow bench and I can tell you whether it's a good port or bad port. I don't even need to see the flow number. I can tell you by listening. I've done enough heads. I've flowed so many cylinder heads. I, I can even tell you what valve seat angles are on it almost by listening to it. I, you know, it's funny. It's like that kid laying in bed talking to his buddy and you, he hears, oh, 69 Chevelle. And his buddy says, oh, 69 Charger. Well, you know what? That's the way we used to be with cars. We could tell by listening to exhaust tone exactly what car that was. Well, I can do that with a cylinder head too. Yeah, so, and, and that touches point too. Like uh, uh, the flow bench is great for R&D and it's great for like uh, NHRA teams and NASCAR teams because they're constantly doing R&D because the more horsepower you can squeeze out without modifying the motor too much, Yep. is an edge it's it's tough man it, and it's a balancing act you know what just just because you get a good flow bench number doesn't mean the engine is going to make a big horsepower number and vice versa you know you might put an engine you know the engine in the car and just because it's got a big flow or a horsepower number uh, the car might perform like a turd you know mm -hmm. it doesn't make any torque or it's real peaky it's got a real narrow power band and that's not good, you know. Uh, you can you can miss your uh, shift by 200 RPM if, with a peaky engine and lose two tenths of a second in quarter mile ET. That's a lot. Yep. So you know, like how I always think of it is, you got your engine dynos, you got your chassis dynos, you got your uh, flow benches. Those are like the top big three things that a uh, uh, reputable engine builder would have typically yeah yeah and so and they might not have a chassis dyno and an engine dyno but they would have i would say probably one or the other yeah sometimes um, you know i'm fortunate i've got an engine dyno a chassis dyno and a flow bench right but the uh you know the average shop um you know they're small they don't have you know the help or the, the time or the money or whatever they may they might have a flow bench they might have an engine dyno and some of them have both, you know, but, but again, all they are is tools. They're not, yep. they don't. Well, you know, it's good to have those tools though, because like when you were making your Rammer five head, mm -hmm. you had, you had data from, uh, your tiger head, but you didn't know exactly how that port was going to flow. If there was going to be a bunch of dead spots in it or anything like that. So you would go in and handcraft that port with, they would actually laser scan it from a good friend of ours named Sam. He laser scans stuff for us. But, you know, my dad would actually form that port out of uh, clay. Sam would scan it and then they would put that into the CAD. And now that port is exactly how my dad wants it. Well, and then he would go test it. We had actually prototype it first. Right. We would 3D print it. Yep. And we would flow it. And then we it, fill that part with putty. Yeah, <laughs> so. and, and because he found a dead spot, or he found a um, maybe on the short term the air was cutting too much into the long term. So, you know, you don't know these types of things until you physically flow it on how the head is made. So, well, and a flow bench does help with certain things, and and you want air speed is what you want. So my Ram Air Five head has a lot of air speed, and it's because of the flow bench. I was able to test a factory Ram Air 5 cylinder head, and then I was able to see where the dead spots were with computer-aided flow analysis, and then I, was, I went in and I fixed them. And, and, it's, and it shows tremendously. Mm -hmm. I mean, the torque that these Ram Air 5 heads make over the stock, like the factory tunnel port head, unbelievable difference. And I've built a lot of Ram Air 5 engines, factory and my stuff, so, and I can tell you, and I'm not bragging about my stuff, but my stuff is way better than the factory stuff. Right, and so that that's the that's the kind of stuff that you would want to see. When, you know, if you take your motor into a guy and and he has a, a small shop, 
and he doesn't have these types of tools. He has to out outsource it, or he just he just builds it and tells you, oh yeah, they flow 320. You just have to take him at his word. Um, and it's not always a bad thing. No, but you know what? As a matter of fact, there's some sharp guys out there. So no, you know what? I don't discount those guys. No, you gotta listen to the guy and see if he knows what he's talking about. Right, but I, you know, just to. A, a, I'm always the kind of guy that if I take my stuff into someone, I'm I would be like, oh, okay, he has, and it doesn't mean that because they have it doesn't know what they're. It doesn't mean they know what they're doing either. But you know, you feel <laughs> you feel a little sure. comfortable, more comfortable with it because they have these tools at their disposal to get you, you know, well, the more horsepower or this or that. If they know how to use the tools and, and that kind of thing. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, for a lot of years, I didn't have a flow bench, I didn't have a dyno, I didn't have any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But but some of my stuff, is, and still today, some of my stuff is really, really good. And it was because I had to use my brain more, not a tool. And so I knew, you know, from talking to other guys that are experienced at it, what I had to do. You know, uh, that cone shape we talk about around the valve. That's very, very critical and important. Um, and that curtain window between the valve seat and the valve and the valve angles on there, that's all real important. Watch the videos, watch my videos on the engine builds that we do. Um, I started this channel a few years back and I wasn't real good at it, but I do have a lot of videos on there mm -hmm. and you'll see them. And watch the throttle response, and that's all because of valve seat angles. That's what that's from. Yep. It took, took me a lot of years to figure that stuff out. Yep. All right, well, I think it's time for us to go to the the dyno. Or, to or the, the flow bench. bench. Yeah, I'm sorry, flow yeah. bench. And we're going to take you into the dyno. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, take you into the flow bench room, and we're going to show you how the flow bench operates. Yep. And we're going to show you the difference in, in test pressures so you can see why. You have to make sure everybody tested the same test pressure. And, uh, you know, just kind of give you a, a walk around on that real quick yep. and show you what a flow bench is. Some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. Right. Yep. All right, well, let's go. All right. I'm in. All right, so we're here, here in the assembly room with our uh, flow bench. Um, I use a uh, Superflow 600 uh, because it's the industry standard. That's pretty much what everybody uses uh, in the high performance industry. And uh, I wanted to make sure that our numbers are uh, in line with everybody else's so that uh, I, the, the reason I did that is I, used, I had a bench that I built. It flowed 1,200 CFM instead of 600 CFM. And, uh, but it was home built and so I was worried that people would think that my numbers were not accurate. So I bought a Superflow 600. That way, you know, we know that it's at least what everybody else is doing. So anyway, uh, this thing is a, uh, like I said, just a tool. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't make the engine make more horsepower. It doesn't make you smarter. All it does is give you data. That's all it does. And then what you do with the data is what's going to uh, determine whether or not the engine makes more horsepower or not. So how this thing works is you got a, it's got lift ranges on it, and uh, you can, it's got an or, it's got one through six orifice plates. And what those do, each one of these has a specific CFM that they flow. In Superflow, they measured all those. And what they do is they, do, they put a chart on the machine here, okay? And so, if, like this one here, we are in lift range or flow range 5. So you come up here to your chart, and there's an intake and there's an exhaust. And we are flowing the intake port. So you look at the intake chart, and you come down to... Uh, lift range 5 or flow range 5 and it's 445 CFM. Now what that means is is that plate or that hole in that plate inside the plenum here flows 445 CFM. So now you have a, a predetermined amount of air that you know flows. So what you're going to do then when you fire up the machine you got to come over to this scale over here and you're going to dial this dial right here which is the intake dial and you're going to turn that up to 28 inches of test pressure or water. And that's the industry standard. It used to be 25 inches, now it's 28 inches. And the reason is because 28 inches gives you better flow numbers. Everybody likes seeing big numbers. So at 25 inches, I don't know, we can do a test today and we'll find out what it flows. But I'm going to say that a 340 CFM port at 28 inches might flow 310. 
But regardless, it doesn't matter. It's going to flow less uh, air because you're pulling less vacuum on the, on the port. So before you do your test, though, you have to make sure your machine is calibrated and your uh, test uh, devices are all uh, accurately uh, uh, set so that you're not getting a skewed number. So what you're going to do is on this scale over here, you're going to go down to the bottom down here and you're going to make sure that it's zeroed out. And they give you a little dial down there, and you can dial that. You can dial that so that you can get your uh, uh, gauge zero down there. And then you're going to do the same thing on this gauge up here because this is going to tell you the difference uh, between the port and that plate inside this machine. And uh, so what you do is you fire up your machine. You bring the test pressure up to 28 inches with this dial. And then what you're going to do is once it stabilizes. You're going to come up to this scale up here, and you're going to look at this scale, and you're going to say, okay, it's at 50%. We're just going to use 50% because it's an easy number. So you look at your, you take, you do your, it's easy math. You take the scale, which is 445, and 50% of that, which would be what, 222 and a half? So that's what, that's exactly what that port is flowing, if it's flowing that. I'm just using numbers. So that's how a flow bench works. It's a pretty simple machine. Uh, basically, all it is is a uh, device to measure pressure difference between the, a known orifice plate and what you've got going on with a port or whatever you're flowing on this. You can flow carburetors. You can flow header tubes. You can flow all kinds of things. You can flow a muffler. Whatever you want to flow, the machine will do it for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire this thing up today. And uh, we'll show you how uh, we adjust it and uh, show you how that uh, and show you the scale. And we're going to use our head that we're going to be running. Uh, it's Ram Air 5, or I keep saying Ram Air 5, Ram Air 4 wide port iron factory head. Uh, the port is uh, 1350 wide by 2500 or 2500 tall. And uh, so what we're going to do is we'll see what this thing's flowing at. Uh, uh, you know what, I think we're set right now at uh, 800 inches of lift, but we'll find out here when we fire it up. We'll see what the, the test pressure and uh, flow uh, range tells us here. So with, that's what I'm going to do right now. Now this is the on-off switch here for the machine. And basically all this thing is, it's a big vacuum cleaner. It's got like 12 vacuum cleaner engines or motors inside of it. And uh, it creates a vacuum inside the chamber and in, underneath here. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you this scale. We're going to bring it up to 28 inches, and we're going to do that by turning this dial. If you notice, look at the scale up here. You can see it's moving. All right, so you're going to let this stabilize over here on 28 inches. Then you're going to read the scale up here and it'll tell you what your head's flowing. So we got roughly 63% is what it's flowing. So you take that 63% and you multiply that so it's 0.63 because it's percent. So we'll do that real quick. So it must not be a full lift on this. I don't know what I got it set at, but wherever the lift range is right now, that's what we're going to show you. So we take 0.63, because that's what it was on the scale up here, came down to 63%. See, it's a percent flow times the scale that we're set on, which is number 5, 445 equals. So that port. Right now, wherever the lift range is that I have it set at, it's flowing 280 CFM. That's what it flows. 
So you know what it is? <laughs> I know exactly what I did. I do believe that I'm only at like 450 lift or 400 inches of lift because I was testing uh, uh, my screw up that <laughs> we were telling you about with the dial calipers. And what I do, so to explain to you why that all happened, I always double check myself with dial calipers. There's, a, there's actually a micrometer on this that measures the lift, okay? And so what I do, what you do is you turn this and you set your lift so you can know what, what your lifts are. But I also take my micrometer or my dial caliper here and then I'll double check myself to make certain that the lift is what this thing's saying it is. I always double check everything I do, everything. So that, but what had happened was when I had this closed, apparently this dial can move, okay? And sometimes what'll happen because these things have got little teeth in there and you see how they get dirty in there. So what happened was is these little teeth must have had a little piece of dirt on it. And whenever I pushed it back on the scale, it jumped. And you can actually see, normally this thing's like this, and now it's over here. So I, I screwed up, didn't double check myself on this because we were in a hurry trying to get this video done. So it was my, my fault, you know, I, but I caught it and I showed you guys so that you guys understand that. But that's how Flowbench works. It's real simple. Um, you can, what I use this thing primarily for is like uh, valve seat angles and uh, if I take and remove some material over on this side of the wall or whatever, I'll come in there with that uh, probe and I will check and see if it picked up the airspeed or slowed the airspeed down. Those are more important to me than the actual flow numbers are uh, because I want to know how efficient the airflow is moving around the valve like we shared with you before. You want a perfect cone around that valve. And uh, the valve seat angles are critical to, to uh, create that. But, uh, and the other thing I, that I forgot to tell you about too is, if you notice, we got clay around this intake port. Well, you have to do that because this is a sharp edge and it creates a shearing effect if you don't do that. So you have to have some kind of a radius uh, around the port so that the air you know, doesn't get turbulent or shear, they call it. And uh, so you have to have some kind of a, uh, a break or something that rounds that flow there, uh, which doesn't disrupt the flow. Another thing you got to do too, I've done this before too, and I'm thinking, holy cow, that was a great move that I just made on the valve seat angle. Don't forget to put the spark plug in. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth about 40 CFM. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure you put your spark plug in before you do any testing. So, but yeah, that's, that's basically what a flow bench does and uh, what we use it for. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick <laughs> a little thing here that, uh, you know what, uh, you gotta make sure that the uh, flow bench operator is honest because uh, I see a lot of, um, uh, I guess you call them competitors, uh, flow sh sheets and flow numbers. And then whenever I put them on my bench, I'm not getting the same number they're getting. And uh, so what, what, how you can do that is, I'm gonna show you real quick, is by how you adjust the test pressure on your uh, flow bench. You don't have to touch anything. All you, you don't have to touch, touch the lift, you don't have to do anything. All you gotta do is change your test pressure. And when you do that, it's gonna increase the CFM of the head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you the difference between 28 inches and just 29, just one inch of difference in test pressure. So I'm going to fire this machine up here real quick and uh, I do believe that we uh, at the lift range we are at currently right now it was flowing 280 CFM but we'll verify that real quick at uh, 28 inches and then we'll shut the machine off we'll check our math and then we'll go ahead and uh, do it fire the machine back up again we'll do it at 29 inches and I'll show you the difference in CFM. We're at 65 inches, or 65% at 28 inches 
on the 445 scale. Remember what I told you, we're on flow range five, go up to your chart up here, and your chart will tell you on the intake side what your flow rate is on range five. And it's 445 CFM. That means that plate in here flows 445 CFM. This port flows 65% of what that plate flows. So we're gonna do the math real quick. All right, so we take 0.65, all right, because that's 65% times 445, which is what the plate is, and we get 289 CFM. So I must have turned this up a little bit from the last time we did it, uh, messing around with it, showing you guys how that worked. So we're at 289 CFM at 28 inches of test pressure. 28 inches. Did that thing just shut off? Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and we're going to flow it at 29 inches. And we're going to see what the flow uh, CFM is at that. So it was 66.5% because we were 1% plus another half a percent past 65. So we were 66.5%. Now we didn't touch anything on this head. We didn't change the range. We didn't change the clay. We didn't take the head off the bench. Did the exact same thing. We just turned the test pressure up a little bit. So it was point, what did I say? 66 and a half. Mm -hmm. 66 and a half times 445, 295, okay? So it improved, and it's almost 296 actually. So it improved by roughly six CFM. So see how you can skew the numbers just by using a different test pressure. And that's what guys will do. And so you gotta be real careful whenever you're looking at flow sheets. Make sure the test pressure is the same for every bench or your numbers don't really mean anything. They don't mean anything anyway, but, but we just want to make sure if you're going to compare numbers that you're comparing at the same test pressure. So that, uh, I just want to make sure everybody understood that why that is important. All right, we're back. So, uh, you know, you've seen what the flow bench does, how it operates, uh, what the different uh, test pressures can do to your CFM numbers. And how you can actually trick the, mach trick the tool into making your numbers look better, bet, better, yeah. better or worse. Yeah, you can change the test pressure by just one inch of test pressure and it increases the CFM on the port. Yep. So, you know what, make sure whenever you have your heads flowed that you compare numbers num numbers. I don't care if it's flowed at 30 or if it's flowed at 25, just compare. And there is conversion charts mm -hmm. too. You can buy, or buy, you can go online and get a conversion chart and convert uh, a number that's at 29 back down to 28 or whatever. And it's just important you know that because if you take the cylinder heads off that motor and you put them on another motor, then well, it, it's going it, to affect it, it. It's not so much that. You just want to make sure that, uh, let's say that you bring me your cylinder heads and you had them at some, some other place and they tested it uh, 30 inches and then I do your cylinder head work and I change some valve seat angles and I give you my flow sheet and it's less CFM than what you got from your other guy, and I tested <laughs> 28 inches, you're gonna say, hey, Don, you're ripping me off. You didn't do the job right. Well, let's make sure that we're both on the same page. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, um, that we're gonna do an actual video though, I think, uh, just to, because there's a lot of stuff we left out with the, the flow bench. It, uh, we did, and it's hard to get yep. everything in this video. I mean, you know, well, we're talking about a 20-minute, 30-minute video when it's all yep. edited. Uh, so, we, you know, there's things that we, we're just touching base on yep. everything. And we, we'll do a, a video that will go over everything, I think. And then also, we'll actually touch base with what we're doing because my dad has fixtures for his cylinder heads. He's got, uh, we might even flow one with an intake holder to it. Um, just yep. because it, it you know, might change it. One thing that we didn't do today, and I wish we would have, is we should have pulled the clay off, and I could have showed them the difference. Oh, in the yeah. Rate, yep. You know, 
it's too late now today, but but it makes a huge difference. I talked yep. about it, and, you know, showed you on the flow bench that we put that clay radius on there, and there's a reason for that. I should have pulled it off and showed you. Yep. It, and it and it's, creates turbulence. It, it makes a shearing effect, and it, it just destroys the port. It will not flow very well. Yeah. And so and you know, th there's a lot of things that go into it. So we'll do we'll do more on that for sure. And uh, you make sure that you guys really understand what goes into all this because it's not just simple throw it on there and and please ask <laughs> questions you yeah. know what we want you to ask questions and i'll answer them whenever i get time or whatever mm -hmm. um and if there's something that you want to see that that we didn't touch base on put that in the uh questions or the uh, comments, comments down yep. below too so uh you know we can touch base on that next time uh you know our next video i'm hoping i just didn't have a lot of time this this week uh, because of uh, we're trying to get the engine ready for drag week and what have you. But anyway, not our engine, a customer's. No, engine. it's a customer yeah. engine. But the um, uh, so what we're gonna, you know, I wasn't able to get my cylinder heads finished up. I did change a couple angles because I, I told you I'd do that, and I did do that. So today we thought we'd just show you how the flow bench operates and and then tell you why I screwed up. <laughs> well, that and we we did want to show you because we found by changing those seats. Uh, that we got actually on the big end a little bit more CFM. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was seven. So it did CFM. help. Yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, and that was just a five degree angle change. I mean, it wasn't huge. Yeah. Now, would you say these angles? I've seen some questions on there from guys. Would you these angles that you put on there? Would they be uh, longevity um, on the street? Um, I don't honestly. I can't honestly tell you that. I. You know, our, our intake seat angle is 50 degrees. Uh, factory on this cylinder head is 30 degrees. So that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, But longevity, I can't tell you how long it's going to last because I don't have anybody, or I haven't done it, uh, to find out how long it goes for. Um, I don't see any reason why it would, would affect longevity for, say, 20, 30,000 miles. Uh, maybe a hundred thousand, yes, but not for you know twenty, thirty thousand miles. And honestly, you guys don't put that many miles on your car the rest no. of your life on these kind of cars. No. Some guys do drive it. I got a guy. Um, he's got a '59 Bonneville convertible, and uh, he's already after I rebuilt the engine. I think he told me he's got sixty thousand miles on it, and that was only three years ago. So he drives that car. That's good. That is good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just curious because you know this is the motor we're building is going to be a street strip combo. Yeah, I, I, this car's got a bin and it's got a uh, title, so yeah. we're going to turn this into a street car. It's not going to just be a drag car. No. So we're going to we're going to take it to cruise ins. We're not going to take it and drive it to California because no. it's got a big tire on the back. It won't be comfortable. <laughs> but we are we are going to drive the car. We're yeah. going to we're going to put some miles on it on the street. Oh yeah, absolutely, definitely going to be putting miles on it on the street. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so make sure you guys, you know, it's very important to not just watch uh, uh, 40 seconds of our videos because we we dive into this stuff. We, it, You're going to miss stuff if yeah. you don't watch the whole video. Sometimes it's boring. I get it because we're talking numbers and we keep like almost repeating ourselves with the numbers and here and there. Yeah. But yeah. the thing of it is, though, we want to make sure you guys understand what we're talking about with these numbers and what we're doing. And I tell my guys all the time here, you cannot fix it unless you know how it works. Yep. That's the only way you can fix something. you got to know how it works. Yep. And that's what we're going to teach you, how it works. Absolutely. So, you know, as always, like, subscribe, hit that little bell, make sure your notifications are on. And don't forget, Yep. every Wednesday night, our podcast. 7 p.m. 7 to 8 p.m. It sometimes runs over past 8 p.m., yep. but uh, uh, DCI Unleashed, that's a separate DCI channel. Motorsports. It's, not, it's not part of our DCI Motorsports 1111. No. So, we, again, you know, we're... We just want to make sure you guys understand. We have DCI Motorsports 1111, and then we have DCI Motorsports Unleashed, which is our podcast slash live event. Yes, and you can interact with those because we are live. Yep. You can ask questions live while we're on on the air. Yep. Yeah, and you know we we'll show YouTube clips. We'll talk about funny stories of the stuff that my dad's put me through and um you know and we'll talk with the, the customers of my uh my dad's and if you're not a customer and you're just a viewer we'll talk with you as well you know 
the chat's Every, wide open. And everybody's welcome. Yep. Everybody's so, welcome. Yeah. So with that, you know, thank you for watching and share and. Yeah, please share. Yeah. You know, we want to grow our channels, uh, both of them. Yep. So please share with all your friends and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on uh, Wednesday nights. Yep. So until then, we'll talk to you.